Ubiquity had a, a lot of strengths. We had uh, hardware design, antenna design, mechanical design. We had firmware and, and software and protocol design. But the one thing we were missing was uh, really our own radio design and our own modem design. The group of guys that are here have been working together for about 20 years. We really collectively have, you know, a lot of experience in the wireless data world, probably more so than just about any other company. So this, this team of people uh, were originally all hired into Motorola. Some of us go back to the late 1980s. We actually worked on a program called Altair. Altair was one of the original attempts at doing in-building wireless networking. That was the first wireless local area network product ever. That was uh, actually the first time that I'm aware of anybody built a wireless broadband product. A lot of the work that we did on Altair sort of continued on through Motorola and eventually became a product called Canopy. Canopy is a very popular product now. It is a wireless internet distribution system used to provide high-speed internet to people, uh, typically in houses where there isn't access to cable or high-speed DSL. We had kind of run the Canopy product through maturity, and, I, I, and it didn't see a whole lot of additional room for growth there. So the Ubiquity uh, team approached us. And we were looking to continue to build new stuff. And so that's what made it very interesting to be able to come over and work for Ubiquity, because their focus is uh, the new stuff. It's working on, on high speed, it's working on low cost. The freedom to design at our level just is just go. What are you gonna do? And, and, and it's like a clean sheet of paper, start with nothing. We could build and design this product basically any way we saw fit. The idea was just to, just to be the best we could. Air Fiber is a new product line inside Ubiquity. This is the first of, of several products that are uh, you know, highly efficient, high data rate uh, wireless broadband products. Our design is something that's a little bit crazy. We're, we're trying a zero IF radio at 24 gigahertz uh, for 100 megahertz bandwidth, which is something that I'm not sure anybody else has been crazy enough to try. As fast as you can send a packet on an ethernet uh, wire, we can receive it and we can transmit it with no limitations. Air fiber is designed to be mounted up in a reasonably high location. It's a point-to-point -point network where the, the two antennas see each other. This is a system that, that under certain circumstances can work up to maybe 10 miles. It is going to be very easy to deploy and align. Uh, it's going to be a, a product that's going to require only one person to have to carry it up the tower and install it. There's a display on the bottom that tells you what sort of power is being received, as well as a fairly comprehensive uh, web interface. We designed all aspects of it, the modem, the radio, the mechanical housing. This is a completely designed from scratch, purpose-built solution just to deliver backhaul. So it's not based on Wi-Fi or anybody else's uh, standards-based solution. So it doesn't suffer any of the other overhead that you'd have to associate with that. So if, if you want to compare the, the data rates of existing products to our product, many of the products on the market today would give you the data rates like you would expect from like a garden hose, the flow rate of water through a garden hose. Our product will provide the flow rate of a fire hose. This product will do 1.4 gigabits of data, which is approximately 300 times faster than you would get from your normal home internet service provider. Operators are going to be able to get between 10 and 100 times more data throughput for the same dollar. So, that's the, that's the big impact that this product is going to have. We looked at 24 gigahertz, and, and we actually wanted to do something up in high frequency, and that happens to be the next unlicensed band beyond 6 gigahertz. You can put it up anywhere. You don't have to do anything, no special paperwork, no licensing fees, no, nobody to go get permission from to operate the radio. The nice part is it allows anyone to purchase a product and, and, and start it up without any issues of getting licenses or having certain hoops to jump through where you can place the product. It, it's a freedom thing.
As far as I know, nobody builds a modem with this level of sophistication. Most people, when they build a modem, commit to custom silicon that's very expensive, very time consuming. It's also very rigid in its architecture. You can't reprogram it. And if you make a mistake or a customer wants to change a feature, it's locked in stone and it's, it's too late once it's committed. We call this a modem, but there may be times when we can actually reload different software into it and actually change the identity of this, of this piece of hardware on the fly. So it's, it's programmable and, and it can be flexible and do basically whatever function you want it to do. Most systems, the farther you get away, the more time you have to wait for the packet to actually literally get from the transmitter to the receiver. Even at the speed of light, when you're 10 or 20 miles away, it takes a long time for that packet to get there. So we actually have a patent uh, pending that allows us to synchronously send packets so that the transmitted packets from both ends of the link actually can meet halfway in between in space. It doesn't have to wait to receive the packet before it transmits. It just, they're both synchronized to global positioning in this case, and they can send packets simultaneously. In the developing world, there are many people who unfortunately have to literally will dig up the cables that go between various telecommunication centers trying to pull the, the copper for the scrap value. The scrap value of some of that copper with the price of copper these days could be more than a month's or two months' salary that normal, normal people would have in those countries. When people are laying copper or they're laying fiber, the guy that's digging it up is not educated enough to know the difference between the two types of cable, and so he'll dig up the fiber cable, cut it, and then look and say, oh, it's not copper, and leave it and go. But the problem is, is he's just disrupted a significant amount of data traffic because he's cut that fiber. The nice thing about a wireless data link like ours is that you can secure both ends of the transmission link and you don't have to worry about the, the mile or two or five or ten miles in between. You don't have to worry about securing that and making sure nobody's digging up your cable because there is no cable. When you're given an opportunity to try to create something new, try to do something differently than someone else has done, as an engineer that's always very exciting. Ubiquity has a reputation for being very disruptive in the marketplace and we found that very attractive. We like to think about products differently than everyone else. I think the thing that's really exciting about air fiber is it's the beginning, I believe, of what will be a number of products. It's gonna be a whole lot less costly and much higher performance than anything else that's out there right now. It's the way kind of ubiquity does everything.